That's gonna be fast and awesome. Hey, Jason Lewis here, and today on the 73 Mustang Buildup, we're gonna be completing the Willwood drum to disc brake conversion kit on this car. Now, I just got back from seeing the Mad Max movie again, and it's got me all pumped up to get out here and work on the car, and today is a lovely day to do a drum to disc brake conversion on this thing. I got the Willwood kit, let's get it on here. All right, so. That anymore. This is the basics of what we're doing here. We're taking the drum brakes that were on this car, which actu actuates by having some shoes in here that push outwards and slow the vehicle down. Now, we're gonna use discs. Wheel will mount here, caliper rides here, applies all the clamping force, and gives you a just much more reliable and stronger braking force on the car. Now, for a performance aspect, it's a must, and for daily driving, I'm just gonna feel better with it. So to get this thing on the car, the first thing you wanna do is pull all of your old stuff off of the car. So that means drums, backing plate, and original axles will have to come out because you're gonna be putting new backing plates on. So now the only real dirty part of this job is when you take your original axles out. Now they'll have to come out because you're gonna take the retaining plate off and install the new Willwood backing plate here. You're gonna to wanna to cut this plate off if you're gonna use your original axles. Now I'm gonna be putting new axles and new bearings on. So I'll show you how that install went. Just slide the new backing plate into place on the housing end. It's easy to make sure you have the correct plate for each side by positioning the parking brake cable pole at the top facing forward. Next up, slide your axle back into the housing, being sure to get the bearing firmly seated. Then, just get the Willwood bearing retainer into place and bolt it all together. Simple as that. This mini drum brake mechanism acts as the parking brake inside the rotor mounting hat. It's a very trick and compact setup. Speaking of rotors and hats, let's get these assembled and ready for their role in this shindig. First, get your rotors lined up and into position. Squeeze a few drops of red Loctite onto all of the mounting hardware, and then buzz them down carefully. Now, just torque these bolts to 155 inch-pounds using a criss-cross pattern that might make you want to jump jump. Will would recommend safety wiring these bolts into place as well, so you better believe I'm gonna twist some wire here. Installing the caliper mounting brackets is a breeze. With the bolts in place, start with one shim on each. Then slide the spacer on and bolt it to the backing plate. Now it's time to get your hat on. Match up the lug bolt patterns with the right holes and put that hat on. Snug down a couple of nuts, lug or otherwise, to keep everything together for the next step, lining up the caliper. After checking the alignment, spoiler alert here, I needed three more shims to get the caliper centered and after installing the brake pads, it turned out that the recommended one spacer worked perfect for the height. Once that's dialed, simply remove the caliper bracket bolts to add Loctite and retorque everything. All right, those are on. Put your pads back in for final. Boy, does that look good. Nice how everything just feels so on purpose with this kit. You know, a good thing about a company like this is that you see their stuff out there all the time. Like I'm gonna be heading out to the Optima Streetcar Challenge next year. That's one of my big goals. And I've been watching that show and you see a lot of cars out there. So a lot of the big dogs are running this very kit. So that's really cool. All right, I'll get this tighten up and that'll be buttoned. Behold the braking awesomeness. No more drums for muscle cars is what I say. This Willwood disc conversion is absolutely the way to go and looks so freaking good. Don't forget to check back for videos on the installation of the plumbing and parking brake cables, 
But next up, I show the dial in on the Total Control Products rear suspension pieces here. And now that the wheel mounting surfaces are in, I'm going to show how to measure the wheel wells to stuff the maximum amount of tire under the back of this Mustang. Quick hint, I'm going for an 11 inch wide rim. So stay tuned and in the meantime, enjoy your drives.